he was a pervert himself. Uh, there, there was, I mean, I think within the first year, 453 victims came forward. I mean, I've spoken to victims of him. I've spoken to ones that have been in the hospital. And um, my son was in Stoke Mandeville Hospital. And, of course, when he had it built, there's this uh, quote from Jimmy Savile. It mentions God on it because he was, uh, proclaims to have been a, a good Catholic. But, I mean, what does that mean? You know, we've seen some of what goes on in that in that sort of environment. But again, there's all pictures of him. Um, after his, uh, his sort of um, post-mortem exposure, there, there is not one trace of this guy in that hospital. Not one trace. Every bit that's to do with him has been removed. removed. And I can always remember watching, is it Janet Cope, his, his PA, who worked with him for 30 years, who just has this weird denial that anything went on i don't believe her i do not believe her she seems very uptight and uncomfortable when she's being interviewed you know that is not someone i think is 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 uh uh ignorant of his goings on i'm not saying she had uh, anything to do but i think i i i can safely bet everything i own on the fact that she knew she knew look if the average man in the street knew then, then she, she knew. I don't, did you, was it? Was it? This is your life. He was on twice. I think. Yeah, he was on there. Yeah. And they said to him, "We were going to get your secretary on, but you wouldn't let us." Yeah, yeah. And then he's he's talking about, yeah, well, she's not allowed to grass and all this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Andrew Ma, uh, Andrew Neil. Sorry, Andrew Neil was very, very dubious of him. That the one that really, really jars me, and. And I'm really not happy with it. I loved the documentary, but I'm not happy with what on, went on afterwards was when Louis met Jimmy. Now, Louis Farouk's no fool. This is an intelligent guy. Um, I used to quote him when I used to um, uh, teach interview skills. He has got one of the best MOs of interviewing I've ever seen. He relies on ignorance and stupidity to get what he wants. He he puts himself so far down on the intellectual hierarchy than the people he's interviewing that especially with narcissistic people, they can't help themselves. And and a lot of sex offenders are not very narcissistic because it's a very selfish way of living. And they, they, they tend to talk because they have to talk because they're narcissistic and they think they're cleverer than you. Um, and he would put himself so low down and be so ignorant that they all thought they were one up and they didn't see him as a threat. So he never really got near to being assaulted or anything. He's an investigative journalist for the BBC. Everyone knew what was going on. He accosts Jimmy Savile on the train, on the inner city train, and brings this thing up about him potentially being a So he's even broached this topic. By the end of that um, documentary... Jimmy Savile is totally and utterly coercively manipulating that guy. You can see it. He is, it's he's, he's like he's got his hand up his jacksy and he's, it's frightening to watch. The next second one, he's, he's even saying, Jimmy comes to stay at my place. He's become a frequent visitor. And I'm thinking, and then, of course, it comes out and now he's running for sure. Oh, I didn't know. And he interviews a victim survivor of Savile. And the one thing, with, with victims and survivors is this really really strange statistic about people that have been victims of abuse and uh, there was a study done on it and it's that they've got clairvoyant ability and that comes from hyper awareness they are like foxes there's a difference between a dog and a fox you know a fox is wily it's tri- it knows it's tricky it's, it's they're always on alert and what you'll find with people that have been in these institutions, always on alert, always on high alert, constantly. And, and they found that they have got these, these, you know, this sixth sense, whatever it might be, you know, uh, and it's, it's just in them because they're, and they're, they interview one of the, the victims and she turns around and she said, oh, to Louis, oh, come on, Louis, you're telling me you didn't know. And she's not having one bit of it. And she really fronts him out. She is not, because he's, he's coming, uh, the guilty party. He's, we, we used to call it in the police, Operation Stable Door. He's doing crisis management. He's doing damage limitation. And that's what we see all the time, 
always, always trying to, well, yeah, well, I didn't know, no, no. So, like, I'm not, I don't believe it for one minute. And again, you see, he's very uncomfortable, Louis Farouk. Very confident in the first one. But he's met his match with Jimmy Savile. Without a doubt, he met his match with Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile just totally and utterly outwitted him. Uh, you know, it was like a master chess player playing somebody who's rubbish at drafts. That was, and by the end of it, it's it's a brilliant documentary to watch. People can't even watch it. Though. They've scrubbed it, haven't they? 